Over 700 refugees were rescued in the Mediterranean this weekend as they attempted to reach Europe. Most of the rescues occurred off the coast of Libya and Malta. Rescue ships are now looking for safe locations to disembark the asylum seekers, many of whom need urgent medical care. This is Anne Decker speaking from the Sea Watch 3 ship. Many of uh, them uh, are well, super exhausted, have uh, fuel burns, um, are seasick, are dehydrated, and have uh, quite a number of them has chronic diseases. We ne urgently need a port of safety. We have requested already several times a port of safety, but so far have not re uh, received any reply. We're in urgent need of getting a port of safety as soon as possible. We already have been doing a medifac of six critical patients. Um, we need a port of safety as soon as possible. Another rescue group, SOS Méditerranée, has over 550 refugees on, its, on board its ship after conducting six rescue operations this weekend. This comes as the number of refugees trying to reach European soil continues to grow due to worsening poverty, violence and the climate crisis. According to the United Nations, over 1,100 refugees have perished crossing the Mediterranean so far this year. We are joined now by Laurence Bondard, spokesperson and operations communications officer for SOS Méditerranée, based in Paris, France. She's been on four rescue missions in the Mediterranean, most recently March, April of this year. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Laurence. If you could begin by talking about these rescue operations, what they entail, and why this particular crossing, uh, Libya to Malta or Libya to Italy, is as dangerous as it is. Thank you very much for hosting me. Uh, yes, the central Mediterranean is the, the migration sea deadliest uh, route in the world. And um, this is due uh, to a terrible lack of search and rescue maritime assets in the area. Um, there are very, very few uh, search and uh, rescue ships, uh, mostly SAR NGO ships, and several of them are being hindered from operating. So the people that are actually fleeing uh, via the sea and that are on tremendously unseaworthy uh, dinghies, uh, most of the time without life jackets, without enough uh, food or water, uh, are in extreme danger and they cannot always be rescued. Sometimes there are just no maritime assets in the area to rescue them. In addition to that, even when we are, for example, present and we performed, as you were explaining, uh, six rescues, rescues this, this weekend, um, we performed them without maritime coordination. Um, this means that despite the fact that we would ask for maritime law inform the rescue coordination centers at all steps of the rescues, we received no coordination, no instructions, and we had to perform the rescues on our own. And Lorenz, how have the European countries responded when uh, your boats or other rescue boats attempt to dock uh, in their countries? Are there any countries in particular that are a particular uh, are more hostile than others? Um, first, this is not really the question. The question is, we did ask uh, for uh, places of safety, and uh, place of safety emits specific criteria. Um, place of safety is where basic needs are met for the people rescued at sea, uh, meaning they can receive medical care, they will have food, water. And it's also where their life is no longer threatened. Um, for example, we would never disembark people rescued at sea off the coast of Libya, in Libya, because it is not a place of safety. And this is, has been repeatedly said by UN and European institutions. Um, so we have now indeed uh, requested several times for a place of safety um, to the competent maritime authorities and to the most able maritime to assist maritime authorities. And this is where now we are waiting answers. We have not yet given, been given uh, positive answers. Uh, it is essential to understand that European solidarity here is crucial. Coastal states must uh, be supported by a European solidarity. And the number of people crossing is not that a huge compared to the number of people living in Europe, the, the population in Europe. So it's really just a question of uh, political will. 
And how has the COVID pandemic uh, changed the rescue operations? Uh, we've had to adapt, and since uh, uh, the the outbreak of the pandemic, we've had uh, implemented very strict COVID-19 protocols in order to guarantee the safety of our of our operations and the safety of the survivors on board and of our teams. Um, so, for example, all of our teams are wearing specific uh, protective personal protective equipments. Um, they do that in during rescues and on the deck of the ship. And when survivors arrive, they are explained the preventive measures to respect. They are given masks. Um, there is a temperature check uh, of all of them uh, upon their arrival. And um, we're asking them, for example, also to uh, wash their hands as much as they can. Um, yeah, we are implementing very, very strict uh, protocols on board. And Laurence, could you explain, uh, even as the EU, uh, various countries in the EU have been cracking down on uh, voluntary uh, uh, rescue missions, uh, such as the ones that your organization runs, they continue to support the Libyan Coast Guard uh, in monitoring these uh, uh, crossings, uh, these water crossings. Can you talk about uh, the significance of that support and what groups like yours are calling for? What are the conditions inside uh, Libyan detention centers where uh, the Libyan Coast Guard takes uh, uh, migrants? Indeed, since uh, 2018, um, Libya has been granted a, a search and rescue region, is responsible of a search and rescue regions in interna international waters of their coasts, which means that, uh, and this is supported by uh, the EU, um, they have been uh, provided with uh, patrol vessels and uh, trainings and fundings for them to be able to intercept people trying to flee uh, Libya via, via the sea. And uh, these past uh, years, but specifically even this past month, we've seen uh, a huge increase in the number of interceptions at sea by Libyan coast guards. Um, and these Libyan coast guards then return the survivors at sea to Libya. And this is absolutely illegal. And this is, these are forcible, forcibly returns. As Libya, as I was explaining before, is not a place of safety. And maritime law is very clear. A rescue operations only end when survivors at sea are these people in distress at sea are disembarked in a place of safety. Um, and then it, many, many reports do uh, explain how people that are have been intercepted and see by Libyan coast guards and uh, forcibly returned are returning to a cycle of violence, uh, forcibly detained in, in, in detention centers. And we've heard, as well as we've read, we've also heard on board testimonies of survivors who have attempted to cross the Mediterranean several times before we could rescue them. And they were explaining to us um, how they were beaten in detention centers, how they were um, their family were called on the phone while they were beaten so that the family would send some money for them to be freed, um, how they would be uh, risking their lives at all steps at, in the streets because everyone apparently is armed in Libya or many people are armed and you can be killed just going out. Many women explain they just do not go out as little as possible only to go and get food and come back um, because they're really too afraid to be abducted or killed or um, to face sexual violence. Um, I've heard this, this harrowing story of this um, woman who was explaining that she was in a detention center with her small few month old baby. And um, uh, some guards had dug a hole um, and put the baby in it, who was crying and started to put sand over the baby in the hole. And the baby was crying, the mother was crying, many women were around and eventually they took back the baby and gave it back to the mother. This was more of a uh, psychological uh, threat. Um, but this kind of events and this kind of, of, of physical violence and psychological violence are, are daily uh, reported to us with, by the survivors on board. One thing that most of the survivors say, if not all of them, um, is that Libya is hell on earth and that they would 
rather die at sea than to die in Libya. For them, even if it's, it's taking a tremendous risk to go at sea and to potentially die at sea, it's still a hope to survive, whereas for them in Libya, they see no hope. And Lawrence, I wanted to ask you, there have been uh, over 1,100 re uh, refugees who have perished uh, crossing through these dangerous sea routes just this year. Uh, where are these refugees coming from? Are they largely from Libya or other North African countries? And uh, why are they fleeing their homes? Um, so in the, the number you're giving here is the number of people that are known to have died in the Mediterranean. Um, maybe there are more uh, that unfortunately perished without any witness. And most of them uh, died actually in the central Mediterranean. Uh, since the beginning of the year, 990 people died in specifically the central Mediterranean. Um, where they're coming from or where the people we rescue are coming from, um, some of them, a minority, but some of them are fleeing from Libya, Libya directly, and most of them are indeed in a migration journey. Um, um, currently on board, we, we have a majority of Bangladeshi people and Malian and Egyptian one, but we have 22 nationalities on board coming from West Africa and Sub-Saharan uh, countries of Africa, uh, Nigeria, Eritrea, um, many countries. We also have few people currently on board that are coming from Yemen, from Syria. Um, crises are many, plenty in the world, and people will try and and flee. Um, then when they are uh, what they call trapped in Libya, which is not always their will, some of them tell us that they were not originally uh, willing to come to Libya, but just on the way were, for example, trying to go to uh, Algeria and were abducted in their way. The taxi driver would not drive them to Algeria, but to Libya, and they would realize they're in Libya when they're in it. And then they explain that they had no way out. That's what I can say from what we see on board.